hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard. This is a Saturday morning coffee chat podcast. I'm going to wander over here and get my coffee. Looking forward to some friends of the channel hopping on. If you are a subscriber of Eat Your Backyard, thank you. I very much appreciate you and always look forward to seeing you on the stream. If you are new, you're seeing this Yes, for the first time, well then by all means, please subscribe. Please add a comment if you're watching this after the fact. We're going to look all around today. We had some things happen last night that, well, we need to update everybody on. I've made several videos on this cherry tree, and it's been a reliable producer of, of cherries for these beautiful hens. By the way, good morning. Hope you got a cup of coffee. And I left it collapsed like this. It actually happened two days ago. And I left it collapsed like, collapsed like this because we wanted to keep picking some cherries off of it to feed to those chickens, which are just having a cluck fest right now. Which is really, really, just drives me crazy. It seems like they pick the live stream parts to start doing the cluck fest. But it's really not. It's just that this is the time of day that they that they uh, lay their eggs. But let's pick a few of these cherries. I think my wife has already been out here picking cherries because they look a little scarce. We all love to, to do it, of course. Actually makes it kind of easy. This tree is already regrowing. The leaves have already turned upwards to get to the sun from its new position. It's amazing how resilient stuff is, really. Oh, there's one. Oh, who could miss that one? Look at that. Jamaican cherry, beautiful. Hate to see this. This tree just decimated like this. I mean, look at that. It's the worst possible type of break. And this tree is really not a good one for healing. The papaya that fell on it has to weigh 400 pounds total. I mean, it's just a gigantic thing and it came down like a cleaver right on top of part of this tree, cracking it in half. Look, they can tell I have these berries. Let's get that out of the way. There you go. Just like that. That's what they were wanting. But now I'm going to have to deal with it. It also crushed my dreadlock croton, one of my favorite crotons. Part of that got, you can see, is sticking out from under it like the Wicked Witch of the West. But some of it is left and that's the, that's the hopeful part. I'm gonna look at the upside and the downside to what just happened here. Always another, another cherry to pick, of course, but this will not be that hard to deal with. It's just heavy. I'll come out here with a sawzall and I'll just chop it into pieces and then I'll chuck it back in here to just to just uh, decompose naturally. I'm not gonna move it from here. Every part of this papaya will stay here. This branch needs to be removed. So I'm gonna cut this one off. I'll cut it off at the lowest point, try to get the crack in it, and we'll hope that this grows back over. I might trim back some of these, you know, wispy splintered ends. That's unfortunate that, that happened, certainly. And then we'll have half a half a tree left that will regrow to some extent, but I've, I've seen this happen to these before. These are very brittle trees. You can see this branch just got completely snapped. So did this one, that's an unfortunate snappage. A couple more, that thing just came down and broke everything. Okay, so this is the end of this giant papaya and the end of this part of the strawberry tree, but what it opens up is, bam, custard apple is now able to utilize full sun exposure. You can see I've been trying to do that by cutting back the, yeah, even cut back these palm fronds so it wouldn't like beat on the new growth because I really want this to, to take off and now it's got full sun. So that's actually a good thing. Here's the other thing. I had already started papayas growing knowing this moment was happening. Uh, here's another, so good for replacement. Not sure if I want to replace them anymore. I had five of them fall in the last two years. Five of these giant papaya trees come down, and it was because of hurricanes mostly. But hey, 
that's part of the deal. But do I want them to come down more and more and more? And it's interesting, this, even after falling, is two days ago, it's starting to grow back up. It would actually just grow back up if I wanted to leave it here, but I'd like to have a have grass more. All of this, by the way, going right back into either the compost bins or back into the chicken pen accordingly. So none of it goes to waste. You know, it's all going to get reincorporated. It's all good, but of course, you know, it's a change. Here's the other thing. Look at this fig tree. This is a generic fig tree that I've been also wanting to and kind of in a little bit of a somewhat shaded, something, you know, this, this way. So it was on the side, but it was not full sun. <laughs> more, more or less coconut to grow over. But, you know, this is a forest, not a specimen garden. So we don't sweat it when things are growing together. Uh, stuff will break down quite easily. The papaya uh, breaks itself down and the chickens will eat the rest of it. Hey, the moment ends. Stoked you're on the stream, thank you. The moment ends says brutal, and I would agree with that assertion, it is brutal. Brutal destruction. The moment ends also says, was that from last weekend, tornado proximity in SB? Yes, it was from that collection of weather that happened, well actually early in the week, earlier in the week we had one windy, windy, section. We've been getting the windy section almost every day, it seems like, at some point in the day, storminess. But yeah, just like a period of wind for about an hour or two, and it got really heavy, and down this came. My son, who was playing uh, Xbox, actually said he heard the thump, the cracking and the thump of this thing coming down. And man, it's so much, so much weight. You know, it's easy to look at this and just be like, oh man, the plants got crushed, but this would crush you and I just the same. This thing is absolutely was a danger. And so I've realized this now looking upon it, that as it was tilting over the leaning tower of papaya that it was for the last uh, five months, it was really just a, a meat cleaver waiting to come down, bam, on whatever was unlucky enough to be under it at the time. And I knew that this was in the path and I wondered, oh, I, I actually convinced myself, maybe as it comes down, it will just brush off the side and the thing will gracefully just destroyed. So I had people over here who did the job for me of trimming this gigantic 50 foot tall Hayden mango tree, which is now coming back beautifully, thanks to the bunny manure. And they took out a, another two papaya that were here close to these power lines. They brought it down like nothing. It looked, uh, made me nervous even to watch it. They were climbed these things with spikes and actually took it down. It was amazing. But they said, hey, do you want us to take this one down? And I said, no. Oh yeah, it'll, it'll grow and what? Okay. I could have solved this whole thing and now I would have a strawberry tree. But live and learn. Live and learn. The Super, good to have you on. Average Florida storm, the Super says. Yes, I, I think that's true. It's just another day. Just another day in the FLA. Don't sweat it, don't regret it. Nobody fed it. All right, look at this. That is the papaya tree, the giant papaya tree that fell down here during the hurricanes. And you can see the remnants of it. Right back here. Look at how it has complete. Oh, there, there's a there's a rotting mango on top of it. We'll look at the mangoes here in a moment. So stay tuned. But that's what happens. You just lay it on the ground, and it is absolutely consumed. All that's left is maybe some of the more fibrous stuff. There's another mango rotting. You know, throw those fibers back. They'll get eaten up too. And uh, didn't really have to do anything. And that's the bottom line of each your backyard. Really, all you're doing is facilitating the accessibility to sunlight, if you want to have a food forest, the accessibility to sunlight, the availability of water, and the you know, control of the, the thing itself, whether that be trimming or bending of branches or whatever, but the rest is pretty automatic. There's nothing you're really doing. You're not making the fungus come up and decay that mango there or the well, if you're not telling the chickens what to do, they're just little compo compost robots. It all just kind of happens, but with your 
just minor steering of it is all that, uh, that you're really doing. Now the other major component, I always talk about this as an evangelist of this approach to permaculture in your backyard to get food, is to make it as much as possible closed system. All this stuff, like I said, going right back into the yard. Uh, everything from the flowers from the prom to the papaya tree that fell down goes into that compost bin or into the, some area and it goes right back into the yard. So it becomes reintegrated as opposed to disintegrated. But it's both disintegrate and reintegrate all the time back here. So I'm stoked on it. What I'm saying is it's not that difficult. You just kind of let it happen in a lot of ways and shape it. All right. So this will follow the same course of just decaying away, but uh, it's heavy. Now I did have a thought of maybe I would take these and get some rootone or, you know, that's that rooting hormone and, uh, and uh, take cuttings off of this. This is a really not great tree for taking cuttings from. I'd say if you put 10 cuttings in, the, in a pot, you'd be lucky to get two of them that would, that would take, very lucky. And uh, I've had a difficulty with it, so I'm not good at it. There's something about it I don't know how to do. I've had friends that have had better luck with it, but you know, I'm thinking I'm not even gonna try that. All this will just be, cut up and turned into compost. Some of it I'll feed to the bunnies. They, they like the leaves, they'll eat the leaves. Uh, I'm not sure if the chickens like the leaves. We might as well find out. This is a good time to find out. Let's see here, they're very sticky. And that's the thing with these, if you look at it, it's a beautiful ovate leaf. Oops. And it just, if you feed it bunny turds like I do all the time, they just create never ending flow of one cherry to the next but they're, it's very sticky, and I don't know if you can see it, like sticks to my thumb. It's a very sticky and fragrant tree, and I, I think you can eat the leaves. I think you can make tea out of them. I think they're very, almost smell like a sweet cotton candy-ish. You like these? Yeah, we'll eat them. Hey, that's my finger. It looked like a leaf. What's the moral of the story? Don't stick your finger out. <laughs> you can get pecked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Verdict is they love it. So I'll just probably just throw these leaves back in here with the, in the chicken pen. That's the beauty of it. This is a composting machine right here this space. It's just a little fenced off area in the corner of my yard that is dedicated to the chickens and uh, anything that we place back here, I'll typically place the pile back here. They'll just get on top of, eat over time, everything. And the sticks will end up laying on the ground and they end up being decomposed and uh, creates a cool environment for these chickens to exist in. But this is a composting machine and they're gonna eat anything that you put in there and turn them into eggs to get right out of the back. Isn't that right? Look at that, the golden retriever of chickens, the golden sex link. Excellent pet chicken. Okay, I need to show you something else. Recently purchased these two plastic flamingos and uh, I think they fit right in. This used to be where the yin and yang symbol was. They are amongst now an increasing quantity of traveler spinach, which is this awesome variety of edible plant that was given to me by my dental hygienist. Shout out to her. It's a cutting, she's a watcher of the channel and I've planted it everywhere. And my method is you wait until, well, about like now where we've got storms coming in. By the way, if I have to stop, it's because the lightning got too much or the, the rain came in. But before that rain that I know is about to get here, I just go and take cuttings and then just jam them in the ground here, there, everywhere. And before you know it, they are growing everywhere. So the cool thing about it is, quite honestly, like what we just looked at, you can just simply go in, pick, pick a leaf or two. And this is a great activity in our backyard, which is just to feed the chickens. Everybody loves to feed the chickens. Like, you know, you can, quantify the value of chickens in a lot of ways, but being able to feed these little creatures who are so 
enthusiastic. You think they like this? Ah. Ah, got me. I always jump. It doesn't hurt when they necessarily when they bite onto you, but it's just shocking. Shocking. Chicken shock. How will we recover? All right, let's keep on looking around. See what's happening. Oh, another thing is this tamarind tree. Sweet tamarind of mine is going to grow now into the full sun. So I'm glad that it got a little extra sun. So although the Jamaican cherry, Montingia tree, although it lost this fight with fate, the tamarind, the sour, the custard apple, as well as the generi fig have all benefited. Okay, let's see. Severe thunderstorm warning in Brevard County, 38 minutes. All right, so we got a little bit more time on the, on the, the stream here, but I may have to seek shelter. We're going to look at many other things in the course of this stream while we're at it. And I'd just like to remind you, go ahead and give a comment if there's something you want to say or you want to get involved with the stream. It's always fun. Always fun. Fun. All right, let's see. Well, the obvious next thing to take a look at is the status of the mangoes. And I just picked a whole bunch of mangoes, dried a whole bunch of mangoes. Dry, mango drying time is here. And you could probably see there's no shortage of mangoes. Not sure what the mango count is, but it's huge. And they've also started to drop on the ground. That's what happens. Of course, uh, got to deal with that. But the key is to get them off the ground before, before that happens. Oh, just recently got a new picker over there at Ace Hardware. That's where I got those flamingos too. <laughs> Couldn't resist, but this thing's awesome. Fiberglass shaft, brand new picker. And this is about all you need if you're doing it right. Meaning that after the tree fruits, what we do, we trim it back. Understanding that, that the growth that's going to happen is probably is not going to produce mangoes in the first year. Uh, you know, first year branches I found don't produce mangoes mostly. However, you're going to have a tree that's not so high that you can't reach it with a picker because if I let this go another season, it's gonna be there. And that's no good, no good. I think you also maximize your fruiting potential as you keep these mango trees a little lower. I didn't let that happen on this Hayden tree and now look at it. Zero mangoes this year, just simply a 100% regrowth year. Uh, in the future though, this mango tree is going to be greatly, greatly improved in its ability to produce fruit. Next year, probably gonna get some sweet mangoes off this sucker, Hayden mangoes are so good too. But look at all the branches. Each one of these branches represents the opportunity to get fruit. So very good. I left this arm reaching out, and I'm glad I did because the shade is, quite frankly, priceless in any Florida yard. But the other thing is it gave it some energy to keep growing back vigorously here. The problem is it's a little close to that, which is hard to see from this perspective, but it's about eight feet from this. And I want to keep that trim back very carefully because I do not want any near the power line mango tree growing anymore. This thing just got super dangerous where it wound up after years of not doing the right thing. Oh, look at this. Just fruit devastation. It's like fruit ninja. Oh. Fat papaya. Everywhere you look, put that on the papaya pile. Let's take a look while we got this sucker down on the ground at what the papaya tree does. You know, and what the papaya tree does is produce these massive flowers, just like this. Look at that thing. Is that cool? And then inside that, you see the beginnings of a little papaya. Oh, that makes good compost. Then comes this, then this, then ultimately that. 
Now you can eat the leaves off of this. They taste horrible, so I don't, but I know you can. Each one of these branches, another interesting thing, I'm not sure if you know, they're hollow. So let's see if we can snap one off. Okay, here we go, I wanted to snap it so you could see. Okay, see that? Hollow, just like a straw. Now, these massive, beautiful leaves are, are not the favorite of the chickens. And I see we have some comments, I'm gonna go check those out here in a second. You don't even eat them. No, see that? It, you can tell. They're not just going to peck at anything. You know, Ponzi might peck at it, but she won't commit to it. But over time, as it breaks down, they may peck at it. But we just chuck it back in there. That's as hard as it needs to be. A uh, little thumper is hopping around the cage here. Thumper. Uh, he's back in the corner. Huh? Maybe we'll go back in there and check out Thumper the Rabbit here shortly. Oh, interesting fun fact on the channel, Eat Your Backyard has many shorts now. I've made a lot of one-minute shorts. I've got many that are coming, by the way. Stay tuned for all of those, various perspectives um, of the yard. But one short, which is beginning a huge amount of focus, is Got Backyard Chickens Loving It. 15-second <laughs> short. It's getting like 3,000 views a month, which is really interesting to me. But to what I, the reason I bring that up is when I see some of the videos that get focused, I just think, you know, what does it mean? And I think it just means there's a lot more interest in backyard chickens and doing things in the backyard, making the home a little bit more of a producer. Focus. So let's look at the comments. Uh, Super Nerd, welcome aboard. You have uh, Babaco papaya, and I think it's more resistant. I do not have one, but I'll look into that. Thank you for the, the shot to the Babaco pop papaya. I have not heard of that. These were grown actually from grocery store papayas that were good, and I planted them. They've been growing ever since. Peter Sauls. That's a cool overhang. Oh, thank you, sir. Good to see you, Sauls. Longtime viewer of the channel. Excellent to have you on the stream as well. By the way, this is a good place to stop and mention my original music channel, which I would encourage all eight of you currently on the stream to go subscribe to that channel and give me a mercy over on Jedi Jingle Maker. All one word, Jedi Jingle Maker, like Luke Skywalker, Jedi, or Yoda. And uh, go check that channel out. I release a new music, a new song every weekend. I release them this morning at 8 a.m which you might like. The music genre is everything from something like uh, blues, jazz, rock, funk type stuff to more like heavy metal to more like techno house type style stuff. So I don't draw boundaries around it, but I produce a new one every weekend. Uh, you might like it. That's a fresh nugget for your ear hole every weekend. So go subscribe to Jedi Jingle Maker. If you're new to the channel, like I said, thank you. and. Also, subscribe here. All right, so this is the Moringa, the famous Moringa. It's been growing quite well. It actually got tilt on it from the hurricanes. Uh, I, I was very glad about that because I would like this to be kind of a, a low grower. Oh, and the Moment Incense says the chickens know what they like. Absolutely, yeah, chickens aren't just going to eat anything. Oh, by the way, let's, let's just totally go on a tangent here. Do they like Moringa? We know the answer to this question, but we're going to find out. So Stay on the stream here. We'll go check it out here in a sec. But this moringa tree itself is doing quite well. They even even have bean on it. You can see there's a bean there. I'll focus in on the bean. Bean zoom. Bean zoom. Look at that. Beautiful. And those seeds have almost 100% propagation capability. So I'll be in the business to be able to grow more of these. Very very cool. See how big that Dracaena fragrance is behind it. That's a, they call that the corn plant it's type of Dracaena. And wow, it's really doing quite well. Hurricanes really can probably. Pull snap that sucker over if we get any this year. Let's cross our fingers and click our heels together, hoping that we will not have hurricanes this year in the, in the general area. But this is a great plant to have in your backyard. And yeah, okay, I'm spoiler alert. The chickens love it. I think it almost tastes like I'm a little bit like horseradish. That's what a lot of people say. Um, it's good 
nutrient uh, quantity in it. So something that is excellent to have in the yard. And once it gets going, which I'm about two years into giving this one a try, getting this thing integrated into the yard, it's going now. Yeah. So the, they know what's nutritious, I think. And it's always, it's bite-sized little hens, hen beak sized leaves. And when you can hold it where they can get the leverage to, to pull off the leaves, it really helps them to eat it. Something satisfying about that. Yep, they like it. It's official. I go pick off the scraps. Yeah, my chicken door video. I did a chicken door short. Not sure if everybody's seen it, but it's been popular. <laughs> my chicken door. I'll tell you, building a chicken door was a big deal for me. We had this kind of cattywampus, like, you know, thing I had constructed, which didn't fully work, and the chickens were always getting through it. And now, now, we've got a door within a door within a door. Snack drawer. There's one chicken that trapped herself inside the wire. That's the lowest chicken on chicken on the totem pole, so she likes to get behind there. I think it's because uh, it reduces the amount of time she gets pecked in the face. Yep, the passion fruit. See that sticker there? It's a just a picture of a passion fruit flower. It was doing so well, and then all of a sudden something happened. Now it's looking about like that. So uh, I didn't know if it was the squirrels at first that were chewing the tops off, like this was growing beautifully, and then all of a sudden it's bent over. And so I think the squirrels got it at that point. And then I think some kind of caterpillar. I, ah! Oh my God, I almost got stung. Whew. Oh, I'm so glad I just didn't get nailed by that caterpillar. That would have been crazy painful, folks. Oh, that's wonderful. What a great stoic philosophy moment. But we've got to kill that caterpillar now. That's the moment that has arrived. The caterpillar must go. And we're going to use a crazy way to do it. All right, let's see. That caterpillar whoo -hoo, almost lit me up. I have been stung by this caterpillar before. And it is so incredibly painful. It takes your breath away. So that's what's been eating up my, my beautiful passion fruit. And I wonder how more of them are here. I'm going to look for the rest of them with my, uh, with my checker as to not receive a super painful sting. All right. Yeah. Welcome to Florida, folks. That's it. Let's look at this thing. Let's take a look. Ooh, the chickens would eat it. I don't really want them to eat it. Put it right here. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. Dirty dog. Now it's just a skid stripe on the cement which is the way I like that caterpillar to be. But I wonder if there are more. And this is a good example of something that I've done over the years, which is just try to figure out if there's a caterpillar or two on your stuff and then pick them off and kill them. And uh, solving many caterpillar issues that way. But you can see it's taken every, it could just be one caterpillar. It could be many. Who would have thought this would have become, become a uh, caterpillar hunting video? But now that we know we have a very painful variety of caterpillar, I think the caterpillar had actually just about run out of things to caterpillar. So I don't see any more, but yeah, you know, today could have been the day I ran my hand underneath that leaf and got the full on venom experience of that caterpillar. And, uh, that would have changed the nature of the podcast dramatically. Luckily, it didn't happen. We were able to destroy the caterpillar and 
search for any of its friends to destroy next. Be fun to find one more. No, no. Recheck that one. There were some that it didn't yet. Didn't get to those yet. Interesting. Interesting. And it's interesting what it chooses to eat. It didn't, of course, you don't see any kind of damage on this traveler spinach whatsoever. But it selectively went and just mowed down every single leaf. So interesting. All right. There we go. Well, but that's why you have one of these. That's one of a hundred reasons why you have one of these. I'll put that right there. Get it later. Okay, nice little side show. Now this is my male papaya, which is growing out of a pot, so I can move it at any time. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. I don't know, it's cool. I like having a male papaya. It doesn't produce the fruit, which in some regards is almost preferable. Don't have to even hassle with the fruit. I don't think the fruit's that great one way or another, but a good example of just the never-ending leaf dropping. Uh, they're almost decayed before they hit the ground, the papaya. All right, let's see if we've got some other updates. One area of the yard that I've been particularly focused on has been this corner over here. And you'll see, oh, I hear the thunder getting closer. It's getting darker. The storm approaches. But look at this corner. This was very arid, very lifeless three years ago. And I've been just focused on growing it from everything. Everything you see here was grown from a seed, a cutting. So all of this was just established here by me doing it. I didn't do anything really to the soil other than continuously lay in organic matter meaning leaves, compost, everything, uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. And so if you look back into the bed, you'll see stuff lying everywhere. Uh, this is a good example of the kind of stuff I've been doing, which is I just take the, I've trimmed off a whole bunch of leaves from this uh, longan tree here, brought it way down. It'll, that's good for a lot of reasons, fruiting and otherwise. But then I piled it here. You can see I took the, the larger sticks out and I just lay them on top to kind of weight it down. All this will turn back into dirt, certainly. But now this area becomes a place that is gonna be much improved soil situation. Remember, under this is basically just beach sand. So I'm feeding the earth with the stuff. Now that, yeah, there's creepy crawlies and it's rotting away and all that in there. So that's part of the deal. But if you just keep piling it there, it eventually turns into dirt and uh, I recently moved what was here, which was a cabin well here. I think it's because of the getting pummeled by these sprinklers all the time. They don't like that salty sprinkler. Now they're back here a little farther away. They're doing well. And of course, the... Uh-oh, 15 minutes probability of the, of the storm. All right, but yeah, this is the Musa banana. Doing just fantastic. Get more Musa and put it out this way because I don't want it to be too close to my neighbor's fence. I had another giant papaya tree here. I was super nervous about it. Got it away from me for you know, 30, 40 feet tall. And during the hurricane, it cl that's the one we looked at there. Okay, a couple other quick commercial announcements. One is that, um, yeah, that you're gonna be many new shorts from Eat Your Backyard coming up over the course of the next month. So stay tuned for that. In addition, you're going to be seeing once a week releases from my Jedi Jingle Maker music channel. So stay in, uh, up to date on that if you like it. Also, I'm going to be reviewing some of my new guitars that I recently acquired in my music studio that I use to record that music. So if you like guitars, gear, music recording, that kind of stuff, check it out because a lot more of those videos are getting ready to be released on Jedi Jingle Maker. They're being in progress right now. And I've actually got four songs states of completion. Typically what I do is fun things over periods of time and then release them when they're ready. And they are almost like a life of their own, I've found. Ooh, I need to, I need to pick some of these mangoes.
let's pick one. You want to see what a squirt, squirting mango looks like? I'll show you. This is just a beautiful specimen. I'm going to pick it away from me because it's going to shoot mango sap out as I do. Let's see if we can get the. You see that? Look. Oh. That's the drip. That is one of the stickiest things known to man. You just don't want to get that on you. It's like getting pine sap on your hand or something, that kind of thing. We usually, we call them drippers and we usually upside down. Like just lay them on the rocks so they can drip out. If you pick them when they're ripe, they don't generally do this. When you pick them before they're totally ripe, they do typically do this. And so we just put them on, I put them on the rocks and let them drain out. And what we do is I'll pick a whole bunch of those and side and then let them counter ripen. And then when they're ready, they'll all ripen at a fairly uniform rate. I have a bunch big enough to do a dryer dehydrator rack full of them. And so I, I do that and then bag up the mangoes. So I've got another one ripening in there, but at this time of the year, it's a matter of just continuously harvesting them and placing them for ripening and keeping that flow going so that you can, can, can dry them. I'm also giving them away to friends, et cetera. And uh, that's always fun because people love to get gigantic, perfect specimen mangoes. I mean, who wouldn't, unless you don't like mangoes, but they're pretty rare. Some people don't like them because they're somewhat allergic to the skin and so on, so. And uh, it's certainly an unusual taste if you're expecting something like an apple. But uh, yeah, the mangoes. So lots going on moving forward. Very excited to, uh, to see what happens in this corner of the yard now that it is wide open for the sunlight. Very interesting. And uh, I was thinking maybe I'd make a video about the reconstruction of this area, just to, you know, uh, maybe put some music in the background and show clearing this whole area out. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you think would be cool to watch. But um, do the sped up, cleaning this area up video. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard. Stoke your, your watch and stoke your part of the channel. Go ahead, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. You mean?